All right, um, let's get going here. Sorry for my cough. Uh, we will create a class in, in this video. So creating a class is a pretty simple thing to do in uh, Visual Studio using C Sharp. Uh, what I will do is I'm going to come to the Solution Explorer and I'm going to add some new stuff to it. Uh, we can see a bunch of files in here. So far we're working with form1.cs. And this is split into two parts, the designer and form1. And we've been editing parts of form1. And the designer is really just this part that we're able to visually work with. So we want to add a class in here. And there are two ways. We can right click and we can... Uh, Oops, sorry, we want to right click on character sheet viewer and we can add a class. And we are going to add our character sheet class. All right, so let's add a class called uh, not class one, but it's going to be uh, character sheet. So make sure that class is selected at the top. When I name my class, I always use a capital letter for the first letter of the first word. And this is our convention. If a, if a variable or a name begins with a lowercase letter, it indicates that it's just that. It's a variable or an object. If it begins with a capital letter, that tells us very special information that it's a class. So if we make a new method or function, we use a lowercase. If we use an uppercase letter, that means it is a class. And a class is a blueprint for creating objects. So they're very special in object-oriented programming. And everything we're doing is with objects. Uh, don't worry too much about all the details of what they are. Just know that we should use a capital letter for naming this. Make sure a class is selected. And then we'll click Add. And we now have, boom, like magic, our character sheet class. A very important note, it doesn't tell us if this class is public or private. When we come to Form 1, we can see that this is a public, well, a partial class. But it's, if we ignore the word uh, partial, it's just a public class. This needs to be a public class for our program. Uh, the reasons have to do with um, certain issues in computer science that we're going to talk about later, maybe if we have time, but not at all during this project. Just know that everything should be public. Uh, and when I was teaching in class, I, I showed people that we can make a special kind of variable here called a property, but I'm just going to keep them as regular variables. The reason I like properties is it automatically makes them public, but if we can remember everything needs to be public, I can say public string name, oops, that should be lowercase, public string uh, race, and public int level. These were the three variables. So when I was in class, I showed a property, but here I'm, I'm, I'm doing it just as a regular variable, um, and that's fine. But at some point, we need to create an initial value for these variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a constructor. And the constructor tells uh, the computer how to make an object for the first time. So it needs to know what name do I give, do I put on my character sheet the first time I make it. So we're going to make a constructor for character sheet. Now the constructor also needs to be made public. But unlike other methods, it does not need a return of void. So, or, or the return type. So when we make it, if we do not give any input, and that's what these two parentheses mean, uh, oops, name, we'll give it a, a name to begin with. Uh, we can give it an empty string, which is probably the best, but I wanna make sure things are working, so I'm gonna give it the name, um, Eric, I am very creative today. We could then give it a race. Well, I'm not human. Maybe I'm more of a dwarf. All right, I'm human, but okay. And then we need to give it a level, and the level will be one. 
or maybe I'm a level 10 programmer. There we go. So this will be the default character sheet. We can change things as we want. All right, so now that we have this character sheet, we can create character sheet, we can create characters, and this will be the default. But we can also change the, the data as we want. So I'm gonna quickly update some information in form one to make sure our, our, our variables are working. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is I wanna create a character sheet uh, piece of data. So I'm just gonna create a single character sheet. character sheet, some character. This is a temporary variable we'll delete. Uh, when we create the form, I'm going to initialize it. So I'm going to say some character equals new. And once I type new, you can see it automatically gives me this character sheet option. I do have to put the parentheses because it is a kind of function or a method. Uh, the return type is actually going to be of type character sheet, but but we put the word new there because we're creating it new. So when we click on the update button, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say that the current name for the text box, or so the current name text box, I want the text for that object. So we can't just change this because this variable represents the entire text box and all the properties. So I just wanna change the text. And I want that text to be the same as some character, oops, some character, but I, I, I have to choose which variable from it. And when I put the decimal point, I can then choose name. So I want the name in the text box to be the name of my character. Current uh, race. So the race of the character will be the race, or the race we display in the text box will be the race of, of the character. And the current level text box, we're gonna change the text of that to be the same as my sum oops, level. But I, I, if I stop here, I wanna warn you, we get a red squiggly line, and that's because we're trying to convert from an integer to a string. And it's not letting us do that, so I need to be very specific and if I put another period, it will let me take the integer for the level and I can convert it to a string. Now this is a function, so I need the parentheses. And when I put the parentheses there, it automatically creates, um, oops, I'm trying to make this wider. So when I put the parentheses there, it's gonna take the integer and automatically convert the integer to a string that can be displayed. So now when I run this program and I click the update button, it should display the text I want it to display. This is not the final thing I want update to do, I'm just putting it there for the time being. All right, so everything worked. That is fantastic. But I, I, I'm gonna use these three lines of code many, many times. So I'm gonna create a method, and this is gonna be I'll just make it public void and it's going to be update current character uh, sheet, right? It's kind of a long name, but fortunately uh, Visual Studio helps us to type. So what I can do is I can actually grab all of this, I can cut and paste control uh, X, control V, and here we go. So we have this update current character sheet. So when we click the update button, I start typing and I can finish it by hitting tab. And this should have the exact same effect as the last time we ran the program. We run the program, nothing is being displayed. I click update and then everything is displayed. That is beautiful. All right, let's see if we can maybe make some changes. What if I click on, uh, what about for the update button? Or maybe not, when I click on the last button, just kind of as an example, what if I change uh, some character dot name is equal to Bill. 
So if I change the name of some character, so the last button should be able to change the name of a character. I'm just testing that my class works correctly. I hit update and then it is displayed. When I click last, now it was supposed to change the name to Bill. But you may also notice, oh wait a second, in the class I changed the name to Bill, but I need to re-update what we're showing. So I click update, it updates it. All right. So, and as I'm thinking about this update current character sheet, maybe it's not the best name. Maybe I can say display current character sheet. So I'm going to change the name using refactor. So when I right click on my variable, I can click refactor, rename. And I don't like the word update because I'm using it a different way elsewhere. I'm going to say display current character sheet. I'm just going to hit enter through all those boxes. All right. So I'm pretty happy with how things are working. Now with this, we change the name to Bill, and I'm going to change it to display current character sheet. So now when I run the program, I hit update. It displays it with Eric. I hit last sheet, and it displays it with Bill. All right. Now the reason I'm doing this is every time we hit a button, what we want to do is we're going to make some changes, but we also want to be sure to display the current character sheet. In fact, when we first start, we probably want to display the, the character sheet. All right, so I'm going to delete this changing of the name, and I'm going to keep this current character sheet I'm going to actually put it in all of these mouse functions. So if I click next button, it's good. So all these mouse things will do the same thing. So when I run my program, any button I choose, if I choose the delete button, it displays it. All right. So whenever we run it, all these have the same kind of function that they do. They, they display the current character sheet. And the reason is, uh, when we're actually programming later, we're going to do each, one, each button is going to make some changes, and then we're going to display the current character sheet. So we've created the character, we've tested it, and we even created a handy, a useful little uh, method to help us display it. Well, I am going to stop here because... We, we've created our character. In the next video, what I am going to do is I am going to create a list of characters and show you how we can access members from the list and then display them. So we're going to kind of evolve from having one character sheet to having many character sheets. And the variable we're going to use is called a list. So I'm going to stop here and uh, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you shortly.